Hi everyone, and this is my video about does Jeff Goldblum have cluttering? And before I answer that question, I want to make a confession that I've actually been mad at Jeff Goldblum since I saw the first movie that he was in. And the first movie that I saw that he was in was Independence Day. Um, I think I saw that before Jurassic Park, but those are the first two movies. Um, and I, I really was excited about Independence Day. I saw it in the theater. I was... Um, it, it, it was a really, really cool experience for me. I I wish that it had better writing, but um, but like no um, sci-fi blockbuster like that has like awesome writing. Um, but the thing that really, really bugged me about Independence Day was Jeff Goldblum's character. And I didn't, um, I didn't actually figure it out until I started um, making this video or like doing the research to make this video. Um, and then, um, and then I saw like like probably a year later, I saw Jurassic Park. I didn't see Jurassic Park in the theater. I saw it on um, on DVD or whatever, and and I was um, I was really really bugged again. Um, and I remember trying to explain like why I was bugged to some people, and and actually I can't even, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember what I what I was actually saying, but it probably didn't make any sense. Um, but looking back on it, the thing and um, and having the benefit of like retrospect or whatever, I'm realizing now that the reason I was bugged with Jeff Goldblum is because he talked like me. And actually like watch um, I watched a whole bunch of Jeff Goldblum videos in preparation for this and I think I'm probably the only person in the world that um, was bugged by Jeff Goldblum everyone else loves him um, and um, and I do now after um, after I've seen some interviews with him he's just a really really cool interesting person and like pretty much everything about this guy is super super likable and so I feel kind of bad for not liking him for so long. But kind of I um, like, and this and this kind of shows um, what's going through my head or what what was going through my head. Like like, like everyone has um, stuff they think about that like when they like start talking about it, they realize oh well that's kind of. Um, that's kind of weird that uh, uh, that's kind of weird why did you think about things this way but anyway like when I watch Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day and Jurassic Park I was watching somebody talk who talks like me and I I'm realizing that I thought oh well when you're an actor you should be like if you talk like me this that's fine but when you act you should not talk like me and so because there was an actor that doesn't normally talk like me, but then when he's acting, he talks like me, then that's kind of what bugged me. But um, one of the things that I realized really, really quickly when I was when I was doing w watching Jeff Goldblum videos is that this guy actually has a whole bunch to teach me. And so what I should have been doing for the last 24, 25 years now is instead of being mad at him, I should have been looking at him as some somebody that can teach me stuff um, because I've learned a lot about speech just listening to him. So anyway, that's um, that's my background. And so does does Jeff Goldblum have cluttering? And actually, since I'm, I'm not a speech language pathologist, so I can't diagnose that. But uh, but but there's kind of two things. One is a diagnosis of cluttering, and then the other is like cluttering speech. And um, the character he plays in movies, absolutely, absolutely, those folks um, clutter have cluttering, um, or or have cluttering speech. Um, in actual in, in actual reality, I think he does a lot of stuff that only people that have cluttering do. Um, but I don't think that a speech language pathologist would diagnose him with cluttering, uh, mostly because most of the definitions are focused around um, what's uh, what's that word? Not not rhythm, the um, rate um, r um, rate of speech. And and um, Jeff has done two or three things. Um, one, he's played piano since he was a kid, so he's been a very very musical person all his life. Two, he's an actor, so he's um, he probably spends hours every day working on improving his um, speech. And um, and three, he's in a jazz orchestra, and so right now his speech is very very rhythmic and melodic and just 
very, 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 very interesting to listen to. Like you can fall asleep listening to Jeff Goldblum. He's that. He's um, he's just a really, really nice person to listen to. And so, if you're diagnosing cluttering based on being dysrhythmic, then Jeff Goldblum is not dysrhythmic. He is the opposite of that. He's very, very rhythmic. So. Um, but but he does um, he does a few things that only folks with cluttering do. Oh, and um, one of the top videos about Jeff is I think it's from GQ where where it's like uh, autocomplete questions. And the second question on the autocomplete um, question is does does Jeff Goldblum stutter? And so Jeff Goldblum gave an answer and basically described cluttering, but he called it. Um, Fumfering. So, um, so, so he basically uh, um, the question was, does Jeff Goldblum have a stutter? And Jeff said, well, not in the conventional sense. And then he described that uh, that it's an aff affectation that he he just kind of developed, or it's kind of like his act. Uh, one of the things he does for acting, and um, and then he calls it fumfering. And at first, I thought it was funfering, and then Google. Um, um, Google's like captions said it was thumpering, so I'm not actually sure what what it was. But I, but I thought that funfering is a really cool term, um, even though I think he said fum fumfering. But um, but and I personally don't really like the word cluttering. I don't think it's terribly accurate, and it um, it's only like they only named it that because it sounds like stuttering. So I think um, funfering it would be a much much better name. So I would I would totally want to change or I, to I totally want to lobby now to change the speech disorder name from cluttering to funfering because it just sounds more fun. Um, so so uh, um, so so we explained that and what what he's kind of reference well he gave an explanation for that in another interview which I read I didn't um, see and. Um, it was in when he was acting in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Then the line that he was supposed to say is, "I never thought they would come in metal ships," and instead he said, "I I I I never thought that they would come in in metal ships," and then um, then. Then Jeff said, "Oh well, sorry, I messed that up. I need to um, let, uh, let's do a redo." And the and I guess the director said, "Oh, that's um, that's great. That's exactly what we need for the role. Keep doing more of that." So so that's where he says that his affectations started. So oh, oh and let me um, let me continue with the analysis. So um, so so then he says, and it's and what I do is definitely not stuttering. And then he starts giving an example of stutter. Uh, he says, what I do is definitely not stuttering because I don't have any problem pronouncing any of anything, which shows me that he has spent a, a decent amount of time researching what exactly is, is stuttering. So he knows what, um, what stuttering is and what he is doing is not stuttering. And then he starts to give an example of what stuttering would sound like, and the video cuts off and goes to the next um, thing, which is probably a good thing because it's not really good to give examples of stuttering if you don't actually stutter, which Jeff Goldblum doesn't. So, um, oh, so, so Jeff does a lot of stuff that only people with cluttering do. And one of the things, um, I've mentioned this a few times, is repeating words a lot of times. So uh, folks, uh, and, and I'm going to say normal, like normal in air, in air quotes, um, meaning like someone, someone without cluttering. So, so someone without Someone without cluttering repeats words, and so so an example sentence of "I want to go to the store." Um, someone without cluttering might say "I I want to go to the store," or they might say "I want to go to to the store." So those are both repetitions, but they're very very normal repetitions, and people like everybody says stuff like that every single day, and then occasionally someone without cluttering would will say something three times so occasionally someone will say i i i want to go to the store 
or uh, um, so, so so that's a three time repetition, and then someone with cluttering would. Uh, um, so, so someone without cluttering would almost never say say the same word four times in a row. So, here's an example of someone with cluttering saying that that sentence: "I, I, I want I I want to go to the store." So, that's um, that's an example of someone with cluttering repeating the word "I" over and over again four or or more times. And so, Jeff's Jeff's example when he was acting and it slipped out when he said I, 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 I four times, never thought that they would come in in metal ships and in repeat twice. And that's the other thing that generally folks without cluttering normal folks don't do is do multiple repetitions inside of the same sentence. So someone with um, someone without cluttering, a normal speaker might say, I, I want to go to the store, or they might say, I want to go to 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 the store, but they wouldn't say I I want to 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 go to the the store like like um, folks without cluttering don't have like multiple in sentence repetitions usually. And then the other thing that Jeff Goldblum does that's relatively unique to cluttering is mazing. And, and mazing is basically when you start a sentence and then you cut yourself off mid-sentence. And then um, and then this can happen multiple times. You start a sentence, cut yourself off mid-sentence, and then start a new sentence. And then in that new sentence, you um, cut yourself off and then go um, go and start another sentence. And so it kind of like, it's kind of like this maze in your head where you're um, bouncing around sentence to sentence and kind of can't get out of it. And so Jeff Goldblum does that a lot. He usually though, um, like when I do that, then I often like lose my, um, lose my point and then forget about everything. But when Jeff Goldblum does that, then he will start a sentence and then he'll start another sentence. And he's usually, um, he, he usually remembers his point. So at the, so at the end he says, oh, and that, and then all of this is leading up to this other point that I'm talking about. So if you watch interviews with him, you'll see that he mazes a lot, meaning just inter um, interrupts himself. And then, and it reminds me of something that someone told me once. They said, Joseph, you're the only person that I know that interrupts himself. And if you listen to Jeff Goldblum, then Jeff Goldblum in interrupts himself too. So, um, so, so I realized um, I realized that I can learn a lot from Jeff Goldblum about speech. One of the really, really cool things that he does is he uses um and uh a lot, but he uses them in a way that is very in line with the rest of his speech. So I think you can listen to Jeff Goldblum speak and not actually hear ums and uhs. A lot of times when people use um and uh, then it just pops out as, hey, well, this person keeps saying um, and, and it's kind of like the word um just kind of pops in your face. But when Jeff Goldblum says it, something about something about it, whether it's the rhythm of his speech or just something about, or he's just been an actor and doing this for so long that he's able to say um and uh just very gracefully. And that's something that I realized about my speech is that, uh, and in my interview with Evan uh, recently, he talks about that with stuttering, then usually those filler words, um and ah, uh, that folks with stuttering use those to avoid stuttering. And so speech therapists with stuttering try to get rid of those first. With me, I had, um, with me, when I use filler words, then they actually help me to speak a lot more fluidly. So. I used to not use filler words as much, and when I started using them, my speech level went way, way up. And uh, maybe I can stop using them and and still have my same level of fluidity. But but for me, they were a really important step in getting to be more fluid. Um, so, and I think that's a good example of an um that just popped out that Jeff Goldblum would never do because, oh, so anyway, the whole point of that is that 
the thing, uh, one of the things that I can learn from Jeff Goldblum is how to speak disfluently, but in a very rhythmic and and um, and and nice and nice way. And he, and he's got well, um, something that people keep saying about him is that he's very unique, like nobody's like him. And that's something that I try to embrace about myself is that I don't think anyone's like me either, really. And um, and I try to. And I try to, I, I I try to embrace it. But here, Jeff Goldblum is this uh, this guy who's just awesome at being like um, absolutely uniquely himself, and uh, um, and just a really good role model for that. And I think, um, oh, and then I just I I always really like musicians. I'm not musical at all, and so I've always thought that if I could figure out how to be more musical, then I. Then I could like naturally improve my voice without really, like like directly working on my voice. So, um, so so that's uh, that's still an idea. So maybe I can get some inspiration from Jeff Goldblum with that. So so anyway, in um, in summary, does Jeff Goldblum have cluttering? Um, answer number one: I'm not a speech pathologist, so I can't diagnose that. Um, do, um, does Jeff Goldblum play someone with cluttering? Yes, absolutely. Um, does Jeff Goldblum have cluttering himself? Probably not, but he has a lot of stuff that only folks like me, uh, folks with cluttering, actually do in their speech. So um, that's my video. Hopefully you liked it, and thanks very much.